Greetings ladies and mental gents and welcome to this patch video for Thief Lord from the website Royal Road. This patch video will contain chapters 41 and 42 and as always I hope that you enjoy and if you do please consider subscribing to the channel. Chapter 41 A Taste of Endgame We face off as Playbringer stares me down, his eyes pulsing green with magic. A thick green smoke emerges from his hands, quickly forming a vortex above his open palms. Toxic wave, he shouts, and two vortexes expanding into a single large cloud before he pushes it forwards, stretching the poison cloud into a long wave of miasma that extends away from his body. No crap, I scramble as I turn and start sprinting. I throw a glance over my shoulder at the rapidly expanding wave of death, I watch as a wave washes over my two half-hawk hoodlums who run for their lives, only to see them fall over as if someone had cut their strings. They grasp their throats as their skin turns an even deeper shade of green, while dark bubbles start appearing everywhere around the bodies. It only takes three seconds for the notifications to appear. Your underling half-hawk hoodlum 9 has been slain by unknown 23. Your underling half-orc hoodlum 9 has been slain by unknown 23. By then I have already shoved my way through the wooden door, closely followed by Cobra and a wave of poison. My underlings have already started sprinting down the tunnel ahead, knowing there is no point in delaying. I nearly lose my balance as I press forward, glancing over my shoulder as often as I dare. My heart leaps with joy when I notice that the wave is posting behind me. Luckily for me, the spell has a limited range, granting me a moment of respite. I keep running as fast as I can, knowing the enemy villain is a higher level than me. He probably has the stats required to easily catch up. Trying to match his attributes to his fool's errand, I need to delay him as much as possible. The Plaguebringer curses loudly as I hear the sound of a wooden door being slammed open. I grin as I realize I must have sprung the trap. As I run, I quickly fish out some potions armed the trap with. Minor glue potion, uncommon, restricts the target with a strong adhesive, limiting their movements for a short time. The glue was expensive, but right now, I think it was worth its weight in gold. The quality of the potion should be potent enough to keep a high-level opponent locked down for a short time, and it should be more effective against a mage-class character who probably has a low strength stat. Not one to make any chances, I refrain from trying to find out how powerful the glue really is. I keep running, following the same tunnels we used getting here. The only time I slow down is when I reach the junctions where I set up more glue traps, making sure not to trigger them myself. The plague bringer's shouting has already died down, but I'm not willing to stop, and I find out if he's really gave up or not. We don't stop until we've exited the sewers and moved three blocks away. Gasping for breath, I find a nice alley to sit down and hide in. This crap was intense. How come there's another villain down there? And such a high level one to boot. I can't believe I survived that encounter. By all means, I should have been dead. Five times over. It's only dumb luck that I ran into a plague bringer and not a witch doctor, blood mage or a vampire lord. God, that would have been catastrophic. I release a deep breath. This is a real mess that I've gotten myself into. The Plaguebringer is one of the least played villain classes out there, and that is only because of its lacking combat potential. The class is still strong, don't get me wrong, but its spells repertoire is easily countered by a group of strong assassins. It's a mage type class that relies on using mostly damage over time types of abilities and area of effect spells. They can dish out a lot of damage over time, but they severely lack skills that can kill enemies instantaneously. The class is perfect for killing lots of low-level enemies, and they have access to some unique alchemy skills, making them able to brew extremely deadly concoctions to use against their enemies. Some of the things they can create could potentially wipe out an army, given they have enough time to set it up and the effective means of spreading its plague. The class is basically the fantasy equivalent of a bioterrorist. This is bad. Whatever the guy is doing down there can't be good. I start massaging my temples. 
I should probably stay as far away from that guy as humanly possible. He's too strong for me to be able to deal with, and I wouldn't last more than a few seconds in a straight-up fight. How did he even get down here? Being a level 23 means that he's been playing for a really long time, and playing in the city specifically is harder than most. There is no way he should have been able to escape the noob zone either, which means that he was probably lurking around down here since launch day, or somehow managed to sneak into the city from somewhere else. I can easily see how villainous character who spends most of their time sneaking around in alleys and hiding could stumble upon these sewers, but it's still an impressive feat for him to do so. I doubt that I would have been able to find the sewers on my own, at least not before I had spent a considerable amount of time skulking around the alleys. Considering the guy only managed to reach level 23 after three months means that he probably didn't find this place quickly either. I sigh. Sooner or later, more people find and utilize these sewers. It's kind of odd in how the place has stayed secret for so long. Especially since I doubt Daenerys is are the only city in the game with a sewer system. At one point or another, the information will leak on the internet and the place will get flooded by people. It's only a matter of time. This is why I need to exploit this place as quickly as I can. I'm racing against the clock here, and this damned plague ringer is messing up my plans. T put his lair in the middle of the harbor district sewers. It's really hard for me to play around him, and I need to kill the level appropriate monsters in this area if I am to make any sort of headway. Him guarding the place will only slow me down. What was he even doing down there, though? Why would he create a lair in such a conspicuous area? If I were him, I would probably find a derelict building deep in the shantytown or something to set up, far from prying eyes of players. He must have a reason for it. From what I can remember about the Plaguebringer class, after I read up on them a week ago, I already know that I can concoct some really nasty plagues. That's probably what he's doing with that ominous-looking cauldron that he had down there. Crap! That explains the strong smell of death I fell from so far away. It's basically a beacon that says something bad is about to happen. Plaguebringers can brew some really nasty crap. The plagues he can create are dependent on various amounts of factors, like the types of ingredients he uses, the time he spends brewing it, and the means of spreading the plague. I already saw that he had a bunch of high-level and valuable ingredients stashed away, so whatever it is he's making, it's definitely potent. I don't know how much time he has spent making the plague, but from what I read, the process can take anywhere from 3 to 10 days, dependent on the potency of the plague. It's a lengthy process for sure, and it gives plenty of opportunities for other players to sabotage the process, but the potential results could be devastating. A plague brewed on a high level ingredients for 10 days could wreak havoc on a population above. The highest level players, guards and NPCs might survive whether he is making, but the majority of players and NPCs could not just outright die. That could be devastating for the city's population, as the economy will take a huge hit. The NPCs might respawn after a few days, but that could be enough time for serious harm to be done to the progress of all the players in the city. For a top guild like Dark Pegasus Guild, having the economy practically shut down for two days would be a huge setback in the competition against other top guilds. Attempting something like this against a city with a population as big as Draenerys is extremely ambitious and the experience gained alone would probably be enough to launch the guy's level into the triple digits, easily. Pulling off a thing like this should be impossible with so many players walking around, and this might not have been possible at all if it hadn't been because the Dark Pegasus Guild insists on keeping the sewers hidden. If he stays hidden down there, the chances of players stumbling across his lair are low, and the sewer stench masks the pungent smell of death, spreading the plague from such a central area of the harbor district as well. Nah, that's probably why he set up the shop where he did. It's a central location, right on top of the main cistern of the district. Whatever he puts into the cistern will easily spread to everywhere in the city, covering the entire population simultaneously. The city would need to mobilize an army of priests and paladins to clean out the plague before it kills off the entire population. Even if they managed to do that, many would still die. 
Really, the mayhem he can cause, it wouldn't be good. It really wouldn't, especially for me. With my lower level and my abysmal health pool, it would be extremely difficult for me to survive this plague if I become afflicted by it. And if I die, then it's all over. I get corpse camped at the respawn area with no mercy. And I don't know what kind of crap he's brewing, but whatever it is, it must be very hazardous to both me and the majority of the players and NPC population. I sigh. I really don't have time for this. I need to get rid of him somehow. The question is how. Well, getting rid of him would be easy, actually, if it hadn't been because it would affect me as well. Since he has already started to creating the plague, he won't be able to leave the project unsupervised until it's done. An immobile villain is an easy target. The only thing that I would need to do is tip off Anna that the villain is strutting around in the general area. And I'm sure that she would clear the guy out before I even have time to heat up a cup of tea. The problem with this, though, is that it would tip the Dark Pegasus Guild that the sewers were no longer secret, and they would know villains who have managed to infiltrate it. This would probably cause either Arya to start another purge of the city, or force her to start patrolling the sewers and all of the entrances. I am not sure how long I would be able to dodge those patrols, but sooner or later my luck would run out. I need to think of something... Anything. My first priority should be to stay alive. The plague would probably affect the entirety of the city, except perhaps the noob zone. I could probably hide there, but I don't have any idea of when his plague is done brewing. It could be anywhere from right now until nine days from now. I don't have any kind of time like that to waste. Sitting still in the noob zone would be just result in me wasting time, followed by two days of complete chaos. Besides, my main concern about keeping the sewer secret would no doubt be compromised anyway. Ratching him out would only be a better option. Not optimal, but better. I sigh. This would have been so much easier if I could just tell the Silver Saints and have them deal with the problem. That would have been too easy, though. You can say a lot about this game, but it is certainly follows the trend of all the predecessors. No matter the threat looming above their heads, NPCs refuse to lift a finger unless the wrongdoing happens in front of their noses. This is especially true for things pertaining to other players. If I told them a plague was about to descend upon them, they would probably just shrug it off and tell me they don't get involved in traveler business, and they are sure I'll figure things out on my own. I suppose I can understand where it comes from. This is still a game, and as a player, I need to play it safe. I'm sure that this is the reason why Arya had to use the notoriously unreliable players to purge the noob district instead of the city guard. The only way that I could actually have the NPCs murder the plague bringer would be if I had a team of NPC mercenaries out of my own pocket. While that certainly is a possibility, I really don't see the value in it. To kill a player 13 levels above me, I would have to pay a premium to hire several mercenaries close to level 30. That would cost me several hundred pieces of gold, and I don't have that kind of money. Think, Ryan, think. If you can't kill him yourself, and you can't tell the Dark Pegasus Guild, then what options are left? I get up on my feet and I start pacing around. This is quite a conundrum. No matter how I look at it, there's no winning. The better option would be to have him eliminated as soon as possible. Could I perhaps talk Anna into killing him without telling Aria about it? How would I do that without sounding suspicious as hell? No. Perhaps if I manage to draw him out of the sewers somehow. That could work. I just need to figure out the closest exit and set some bait. Hell, the guy probably has to leave the sewers to get some ingredients out at one point or another, anyway. No. There is no guarantee he doesn't have everything he needs at ready. I should try and bait him out. It's risky as hell, and there is no guarantee I'll succeed, but it's my best chance to get rid of the plague bringer while keeping the sewers a secret and Arya out of my hair for a while longer. I wouldn't even consider this plan if it wasn't because I'm still fairly low level and having to re-roll my character isn't a complete disaster yet. I just wish that I had a safe way of doing it, though. I need some time to think. I do some light stretches before I round up my underlings and send them off together at the warehouse. No matter what I decide to do, I need to pick up some more supplies and get my two half-orcs up and running with some new gear. 
I said a slow pace northeast while mulling over my disposition. No matter how I think about it, I just don't have a good solution for drawing out the Plaguebringer into the open. I need an ace up the sleeve, an ace that I just can't seem to find. My first stop is the alchemy store that sells all kinds of potions and ingredients. The store is a dime a dozen around the city, and since I'm a fair distance away from the market district, there are no players nearby to interrupt my scheming. I pick up half a dozen more glue potions as well as an assortment of oils and vials of acid. I'm really come to light creating traps that utilize liquid substances, and it has brought a certain amount of flexibility to the way I approach most fights. I don't think I'll ever not create more glue traps. Those things are freaking amazing. The next stop I make is Odin's place. The grumpy little halfling is nowhere to be seen, and one of his NPC apprentices manned the store while he's off God knows where doing whatever grand monsters do at the Zawa. I decided to stock up on materials to last me a week, and I have noticed that my proficient skills have advanced steadily despite only using the most basic recipes. I should probably upgrade these sometime down the line, but it's an expensive endeavor, and the basic traps have worked just fine by me so far. My main focus should be to grind more skill levels first. My final stop around the shopping is all the way back into Shantytown. I need some new gear for my dead hoodlums, and the best place for it is the elves, weapons and armor. Oi, where the hell have you been, boy? We've been looking for you all over town. The silver tooth fence grunts at me as we walk into the saw. Um, hello to you too, I say, firing my brows. What do you mean you've been looking for me? Who's we? The organization. Who you think it was? The fairy queen's aunt. He grunts while shaking his head. Useless little. He mutters the last part and his sentence disappears under his beard. I rub the bridge of my nose. Let it go, Ryan. You're too young to get a brain aneurysm. Yeah, yeah, I get it. What do the Silver Saints want a little old me? Shh! Keep it down, you little dumbwit. You want the entire city to hear. He hisses, throwing a cautionary glance at the door. The dwarf jumps off the crate he's standing on and hurries towards the door, cursing with every step that he takes. After shuttering the door and closing the shutters on the windows, he hurries back over towards the counter. Listen, boy, the organization requires your skills for a little, uh, excursion of ours. He says in a hushed tone. Wait a moment, is this what I think it is? It sounds an awful lot like I'm about to receive a... Syndicate slaughter. Class quest. Difficulty hard. Deadline five days. Rewards 1,000 experience. One class unique soulbound item. A local crime syndicate has been trespassing on the Silver Saints' territory as of late. The syndicate has raided several of the Saints' warehouses and murdered a few of their members. The group is led by a fourth son of a disgraced dark noble elf named Alswar Fokmal. The Saints demand you take his head. Do you wish to accept this crest? Holy fudge nuggets on a stick. This is an NPC-generated class quest. Do they even exist for villains? Wow. I have been scouring the internet for three months about anything related to quests or in-game content for villains, and I have come up with nothing. This is huge. Not only have I accidentally stumbled upon the NPC faction that deals with villains, but I have also managed to get a chance at a class quest. Am I the first to stumble upon the secret? If no, then how many know about it and keep it a secret? This is huge. I think I just got a small taste about what the end game content for villains is about. So what do you say, boy? You're up for it, Alf says. I take a deep breath. Oh, hell yes. End of chapter. Chapter 42. Flipping a coin. I can't believe my luck. Who would have thought that I, some random-ass player with a random-ass city, ended up finding endgame content that not even thousands of higher-level villains before me have managed to do? The rewards for the job is quite figuratively insane. A thousand experience in a class-unique item. That's like adding the reward of three or four quests together into one. I know that there is a very finite number of class quests in the game, but this really takes the cake. For most regular players, they are able to unlock class-specific quests every 10 levels, and the rewards are usually far better than most other quests. They are nowhere near as powerful as these rewards, though. 
Class unique items are unusually reserved for players who cross a level 50 mark. To get one at level 10. Wow. Why hasn't any other villain stumbled upon this yet? Is finding a friendly NPC faction really this hard? True, I never found any when I was playing as a necromancer, but I kind of decided to avoid people at all costs back then. Did I really miss some grand opportunity? Could a class unique item have changed the tide of my failed assault in Kalman village? I don't want to think about it. It's probably for the better if I don't go down that particular rabbit hole. Changing my class into a thief lord was probably for the best. No, that's wrong. It is for the best. I've already managed to achieve more in this last week than I ever did playing a necromancer. This is my future and I need to stick to the path that I've chosen. The rewards though, the class unique item in particular, I wonder what it is. The few class unique items that have been picked up by high level regular players in this game so far are extremely amazingly powerful, granting an ability related to the class. The item you get is always randomized, meaning that most players won't get the same item for the same quest. This makes it far more difficult to predict what sort of item you get. And it's harder to tailor your playstyle to revolve around a class unique item. The effects of these items can vary a lot, and sometimes you want to keep the effect hidden. It's nice to have an ace up your sleeve after all. Who wouldn't want to hide their ability to turn invisible for 10 seconds? or reflect all the damage for the next 5 seconds for example. The possibilities for these items are huge, and it can definitely lead to some unique developments for my character going forward. The question is though, could the item be the exact thing that I need to get out of my current predicament? Maybe, probably not. No, definitely not. I've been so lucky lately, I'm bound to run out of steam at some point. But perhaps I should just trust my luck one final time. One last reckless rump in the sack with old lady luck. Ah, who am I kidding? I probably would never stop being this reckless. I won't be stupid about it though. I'll do it like this. Chances are really low that the plague bringer will finish the concoction during the next few hours. The night is soon approaching, which means the city is scrolling with players. If I were him, assuming that he's not more of a, an idiot than I am, I'd avoid spreading the plague while there are abundance of players who are capable of combating the plague before it even gets the chance to properly spread. He doesn't get any experience points from killing players after all. This means I probably have 7, maybe 8 hours of safety. I have absolutely no guarantees my assumptions are correct, but statistical probability of his plague being done brewing isn't terribly high. Several hours aren't much when the most powerful type of plague takes 10 days to brew. It's a 16.8% chance that is being done during the next 7 hours in fact, give or take. Probably higher. It's still a risk, but it's a risk that I might be worth taking. My survival is actually guaranteed if I buy some powerful cure disease and healing potions. The city's population dying out for a few days would still hit me like a brick, but managing to keep the sewers a secret for a while longer might just make the risk worth it. Do you know what? I think risking is the lesser of evil. Barely. I should spend this time trying to get the class unique item. If I get the item and it turns out to be useless, I'll message Anna and have her wipe the guy from existence. If the item turns out to be exactly what I need though, then I'll try to bait the guy into a trap. It's like flipping a coin, or maybe spinning a wheel. Anyway, the next few hours will decide which path I'll tread. I spend the next two hours preparing, I resurrect my two fallen hoodlums and buy some new armor for them. It's getting kind of annoying buying all the stuff every time they die, but it's a necessary expenditure. Trying to have them fight without any gear would turn disastrous real quick. At least I have a decent stockpile of weapons from the hunting zombies on hand though. I send Cobra and the rest of my underlings back into the sewers to help my last few underlings reach level 10. With a boost from my mentor skill, it shouldn't take too long. In the meantime, I start creating some more traps. I bought a fair share of interesting new potions I want to try out, and I have a particularly interesting idea that I want to experiment with after I notice the success of my glue trap on the plague bringer. This is going slow, but I managed to build a decent stockpile of traps by the time Cobra and the rest of my underlings return, seeing that they've all reached level 10. I nod in satisfaction before we head out. 
The syndicate I'm hunting has taken up residence in an abandoned tavern at the south and end of the harbour district. It's in a remote and run-down area of the city, and I can't see much activity nearby from the players or NPCs. The building that I'm looking for actually looks indistinct. I have a feeling that the system populated the building at the exact moment that I decided to accept the quest. The game has been known to do this before. Where previously abandoned areas suddenly spring to life as a quest locations as soon as they are needed. I suppose that's the game's way to create dynamic contact for a game without unnecessarily overtaxing some game systems by having too many unused monsters strutting about for too long a period. It makes it harder to find online guides to completing quests too, seeing as no two quests are necessarily the same. The tavern is a two-story building located deep inside a cul-de-sac near the ocean side. The neighboring houses all seem to be abandoned, seeming to fall apart where they stand due to a lack of maintenance. The doors and windows are all nailed shut and I can see the light from inside. It looks kind of spooky, but I suppose this makes it easier to perform the quest. Nothing would be more annoying than to have the locals call the city guards while I'm in the middle of combat. The abandoned tavern is also only building that shows signs of life. The doors and windows are all shut, but the light escapes through the cracks and the window on the first floor. I'm not sure how many are in there, but the building is large enough to support a significant amount of enemies. I shouldn't go in blind, so I take Cobra and my two cutthroats with me to sneak around and look in the alternate way in. We start by circling the area, getting a feel for the layout of the land. There's not a lot to see, but I spot a few good escape routes to take if things go south. Finding a way in turns out to not be difficult at a task. Apart from the front door, there are two other points of entry. There's the kitchen entrance at the far back of the building, as well as an open window on the second floor. Entering through the second story window could also be the most optimal path to take, but I also don't want to split my troops too much. Most of my underlings have some sort of climbing ability, but I do not. That means that if I want to come along on this mission, then I have to enter through either the front or the back, which means that I would need to split my forces. I am not overly keen on splitting up my troops over multiple floors, since I don't know how many enemies are inside. If either of my groups gets swarmed by the enemy, we could end up in some serious jeopardy. We inch our way closer to the building, trying to get a look inside. All the doors and windows are firmly locked, but there are a few cracks in the wooden shutters that should allow me to peek inside. I find the window at the front of the building that has a crack in it just as large enough for me to get a decent look at the interior. As predicted, the main corridor into the open bar area. I spot several enemies, at least four, all level ten. I only spot two different types of enemies, and I waste no time inspecting them. Human Thug 10, HP unknown out of unknown. Gnome Thug 10, HP out of unknown out of unknown. Wood Elf Prowler, HP 10, unknown out of unknown. Human Prowler 10, HP unknown out of unknown. Ouch, that's a tough fight. Tough, but not impossible. The problem is that I don't know if fighting them will attract additional enemies. There's a door leading to some back room that set of stairs leading upwards. It's also a bit worrying that I can't see an enemy leader. One thing is definitely for certain though. Unlike my previous jobs, this is definitely a combat-oriented quest. Luckily for me, it's not all bad. Combat quests are usually a tad tougher than other quests, but they also have fairly straightforward. Unlike the stealthy bard's college job where I had to evade some high-level guards, this job should have only enemies within my level range. It's still a hard-rated quest though so I still need to take extra care in proceeding forwards. So how am I going to do this? The main problem with this fight is the possibility of enemy reinforcements. If this turns into an extended fight, then I should try and kill the enemies in here as quickly as possible. I have a few powerful abilities as a thief lord, but they also have a fairly long cooldowns. I will burn off all my heavy hitting skills early and run the risk of having no skills available with the inevitable boss fight. Hmm, I need to play this one safe. I'll hold off on using my abilities until I've figured out if there are any enemy reinforcements. War enemy shouldn't be too difficult with my current lineup, but the lack of heating is always a worrying aspect if there are multiple battles in a row. 
If we lose too many health points, it might put us in a tough spot later. I'm trying to go for a speedy run after here. To compensate for the lack of early combat prowess, though, I should take the risk and participate directly in the battle. I may not have any offensive capabilities, but I still have a decent mana pool. While my calm spell is far less effective in the middle of a combat scenario, it is still able to momentarily disrupt enemies from short time. I reckon that I can buy my underlings up to 4 or 5 seconds per cast, which is actually a fair amount in the middle of combat. It's a bit annoying that my health pull is so low though. I could consider placing a few points next into a constitution. I can't really afford the risk of a random death. Since I don't know if all the enemies we call reinforcements, I think my best tactics would be to go for speed rather than caution on the first encounter. There are several enemies and I need to kill them as quickly as possible in case their numbers get bolstered. Four enemies I can handle. Six or seven? Not so much. I'm not overly fond of rushing in like this, but recklessness is often the safest tactic there is. It's a pity that I don't get used to any of the traps here, though. They're not a viable in a blitz attack where I'm the aggressor. I should probably hit them from two sides. I'm not sure if there are any enemies that back entrance, but the layout of the room suggests that there is little room for more than an enemy or two in the kitchen. There probably isn't anyone there at all. The real problem is upstairs but I should be able to block any reinforcements from coming down with a little effort. I decide to send a small team of heavy hitters to the back door. This sets them up for a great flanking position, while also making sure they can kill any stragglers quickly on their own. I decide to send Cobra and my two cutthroats, leaving me with the remaining three thugs and two prowlers for the attack and front of the building. If all goes well, we will kill four enemies downstairs before they even know what hit them. Content with my plan, I order my underlings to apply blight poison to their weapons. Sadly, I don't have more than four paralyzing poisons left, as I used a whole bunch of them hunting undead in the sewers earlier. I probably should have been a bit more stingy with the use, but I couldn't really predict that I would end up with this quest. Now could I? I took a deep breath while I watched Cobra's team disappear around the corner of the building. Right. This is it. Pure combat. You can do it, Ryan. There are only four of them. Easy. The plan is pretty straightforward. My team is supposed to enter first, drawing the attention of the enemies within. My goal is to separate their thugs from their prowlers, making it easy for Cobra's team to take the bout, thus eliminating the main damage output. Simple, in theory, not always as easy as in reality. I enroll my shoulders while my hand unconsciously pats a small leather pouch on my side containing a high-level cure disease potion and five high-grade healing potions that have been prepared personal emergency. They cost me an arm and a leg, but they're worth it. If the plague hits us during this mission, I'm certain I'll make it. It would suck to have in my underlings die, but at least I'll be able to recover the gear. Right, enough dilly-dallying. Here goes nothing. I tense my shoulders as I order my two half-orc thugs to kick in the door. They are only happy to oblige, and soon after the wooden door stands open as my underlings and I barge into the tavern. I look around as we enter, seeing the surprised faces of the four enemies who occupy the room. Our two opposing sides just stare at each other for a quarter of a second, no one quite comprehending the situation. I quickly locate the first target and start channeling my calm spell, the translucent mist gathers around my hand and shoots off towards the closest prowler. The prowler hit it straight in the face as I watch the spell take a hold around his head. He blinks twice, and I can see that his shoulders sag as he loosens his grip on his crossbow. Then, all hell breaks loose. The two enemy thugs shout in rage as they charge at my own men, raising their short swords for an overhead strike. My own thugs are quick to comply, spreading out to try and flank the enemies as they approach. My attention is drawn elsewhere, however, as I need to keep control of the two ranged units. The first prowler is already showing signs of coming to his senses, and the second is nowhere to be seen. Where the hell did he? Pain shoots through me as a crossbow bolt slams into my shoulder. Recoiling from the shock, I take a step backwards, looking around. I locate the second prowler just as his head disappears behind the bar corner, probably to reload his crossbow. Crap! He's using cover. 
My eyes instantly jump back over towards the first prowler, who's about to wake up. Before he comes fully aware, though, my two prowlers launch their own projectiles at the incapacitated enemy. He takes two crossbow bolts to the chest, completely nullifying the effect of my spell. As he comes around, he raises his crossbow and takes aim, but not before my second calm spell finishes casting, once more bringing the prowler into a daze. He shoulders stump, and he accidentally triggers his crossbow. The bolt loosened as it flies harmlessly above the head of the fighting thugs at the center of the room. Where the hell is Cobra? I shout as I crouch behind the line of thugs and drink a health potion. The crossbow bolt hit me earlier took half my health points, and I can't risk getting hit again. Almost as if on cue, the door to the kitchen slams open as Cobra tackles an unknown enemy into the room. The two combatants fall to the ground, and weapons flail around as the two start mortal combat. Moments after, my two cutthroats charge into the room, each one of them dashing towards a prowler each. About freaking time, I mutter, as I once again look around the room. It seems like we are winning. The two thugs at the front are steadily being overpowered by the might of my three thugs, and their two prowlers are also busy dodging the deadly daggers of my cutthroats to do anything. The third thug from the kitchen is mercilessly being hammered into the ground by Cobra, while my two prowlers are taking pot shots at every opportune moment. Perhaps I'm actually way too overgeared for this mission. If this is all the mission has to throw at us, I'll probably be done before. Shouts appear from the top of the stairs, and I turn around in time to watch two thugs and a prowler leap down the stairs. Oh, come on! End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this match video. If you enjoy the story, please don't forget to go and show the author some support. And if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below. The easiest way to support this channel would be to subscribe and share as much as possible to help this channel grow. And I'll see you all in the next video, and until then I hope you all keep well and safe. Cheers.